but we'll find out. All right. Uh, to be seven point two day two con proofs continued. <clears throat> Okay, out of curiosity, just wondering what kind of nerds I have in this room. Uh, raise your hand if you kind of enjoy doing these proofs a little bit and getting it to match. Okay. More so than last chapter with all the graphing? Hey, door. Door, someone's on the door. I feel you. We're only doing two examples today. But they're both pretty tough. All right, now I am going to do a specific way on this proof. So please don't take off and try to do it by yourself right now because I'm teaching you a certain method, okay? Um, there's one kind of uh, trick, I guess, that uh, you know like how in anything, I'm, sur I'm sure there are certain things that I have absolutely no idea about. Let's see, what's something I don't know anything about? Uh, basketball. I'm sure that there is something in basketball when a certain moment happens and you think this is a good opportunity to do this and you just see it right you play it enough that at some point you say this is a really good opportunity to do a layup or whatever it is right and you just know it because you've done it so many times and when i see something like this one minus sine x i immediately think of my unit circle and i think that's pretty darn close to 1 minus sine squared. So I think, how can I make it into that to make this useful? So here's how I would do that. I'm going to, on this side, and this side only, because remember, I can only change one side at a time, I'm going to multiply by 1 plus sine of theta. And I'm going to do that on the top and the bottom, because I have to be even. This is what Ryan was talking to us about yesterday, a difference of squares. Um, if I was to FOIL this right now, and if you're working ahead, please stop working ahead and just listen. If I put this into like a box or I FOILed it right now, let's do it in our heads. Everybody look up. Do you see how you'd get a 1? One? 1 times 1? And then this one here would be negative sine squared. 1 minus sine squared. Are you with me there? And then this stuff, this one would be negative 1 sine of theta, and this one would be positive 1 sine of theta. Do you see how the middle two and the outside, the inner and the outside would cancel each other out? So we're left with just this. Now this is just the bottom of the fraction, so I probably shouldn't have written that there. But the bottom of the fraction is now 1 minus sine squared theta. And that's what I wanted it to be because I want to use this formula. And then the top, um, maybe I'll just leave it this way for now. Another reason why I'm liking this right now and thinking I made a good choice, do you see how now I have 1 plus sine of theta and 1 plus sine of theta? That's the reason why, because I bet a bunch of you right now are thinking, why don't you just distribute that cosine in? And the reason why I thought in my head I don't want to is because I noticed that I've got 1 plus sine of theta on both sides, so I kind of want to leave that. I'm hoping I can cancel out that cosine at some point. Am I talking too much about what I'm thinking in my head, or is this helping? helping? Okay. So what can I replace the bottom with now? What was the whole point of making it 1 minus sine squared? Cosine. cosine squared. So 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. And yes, thank you for saying cosine and not cos. 
cosine squared theta goes on the bottom now. On the top, I've still got cosine theta and 1 plus sine theta, which I'm deliberately not distributing in because I think that that already matches. And now what? Cross out this cosine and the square down there to cancel out. I'm left with 1 plus sine of theta over cosine theta on both sides. And this one I didn't even have to break down into x's and y's. But remember that there are many problems where it works better to break something down into x's and y's, and there's also many different ways to do proofs. What if somebody else did this proof by breaking it down into x's and y's and they took a page and a half and then they got to the right answer? Would they be wrong? No. No, they're still right. Just because if I said to you, hey, walk to Mr. Hernandez's room, if you walked from here straight to Mr. Hernandez's room, you'd get it right. But also if you walked from here down to Stopplemore's room and then looped around outside the school, walked in through the door by Mrs. Moe's and then went to Hernandez's room, you're still right. You just did it a different way. And some ways are faster than others, but also some ways make more sense to other people. And sometimes the longer way makes more sense. So the shorter way isn't always the best way, but I do want to show you a couple tricks like this that you can use. Everybody understand? All right, one more. And then I'll let you go and work on that big long proof assignment. Example four, or example seven. Is that right, seven? Yeah. <coughs> Okay, secant alpha plus tangent alpha, you can change them to thetas if you really want to. secant theta plus tangent theta divided by secant theta minus tangent theta equals sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta plus 1 over cosine squared theta. That's tough and it's scary. Suggestions? Yeah? The top right looks like a quadratic. Yeah, and we can factor it. And that is the trick on this one. We're going to factor it. But on this one, I do think it's wise to break it down to x's and y's, which makes it look a lot easier before we factor. Okay, so let's start there. On this side, secant is what? 1 over, do you automatically know it? 1 over x. And tangent is y over x. On the bottom, it is 1 over x minus y over x. And over here, we've got y squared plus 2y plus 1 over x squared. So it's hard to see, but what Ryan was saying is this top right can be factored. In fact, it's just a simple x problem. What's the number that goes on top? 1. And on the bottom? 2. We're looking for two things that multiply to get 1 but add to get 2. Nope. <laughs> Did you just say two and three and four? No, I said two and negative. Okay, that makes me feel better. At least it was two numbers. <laughs> well, it's one and one there, but woo! One times one is one. One plus one is two. Oh, it does make me feel better, though, that you didn't say two and three and four. I'm like, oh, no. It's three numbers, even. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Two and three and four. Two and three and four. And we should just all broke into dancing. <laughs> Isn't it funny when you start doing this really hard stuff? Really, really hard stuff. We're doing trig proofs. This is really hard stuff. And then all of a sudden somebody's like, and four plus 13 is, and you're like, Ugh, 17. And I'll grab my calculator and make sure. Okay, I like this one. I like how we've got y plus y here. That feels right. Um, other side. Now, on the other side, what do you think we should do? Times the 
full bottom of the bed. You can't sew up the lower bed. You cannot, okay, so you can't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to everybody individually here because you all came up with good ideas. Gustavo, say what you said one more time. Have the whole bottom and bottom top together. Um, so you're suggesting... The whole top, the whole top, the whole top 